I'm going to talk a little bit uh, briefly about uh, FMD, and this is one of the th something you won't see very often, but it will come up uh, on kind of questions on uh, on in-service exams and, and, and uh, other exams uh, throughout. So it's something that we need to be familiar with. Um, uh, FMD is a non-atherosclerotic, non-inflammatory angiopathy of the medium-sized arteries. Uh, uh, multifactorial as far as etiology goes, uh, and some thoughts it may be related to vessel wall ischemia, uh, related to the vasorum, vasospasm, tobacco abuse, hormonal. It's, this is a, something as opposed to when we talked about popliteal aneurysms, this is, which is mainly male. Uh, over here, this is mainly women. Um, and it can be inherited, uh, autosomal dominant with variable penetrance. Uh, it uh, occurs in the mid to distal uh, renal artery, and uh, the medial fibrodysplasia is the most common. Uh, it can be uh, um, bilateral, and uh, so in regards to just FMD, uh, it's 60 to 70 percent of the time it occurs in the renal arteries, and bilateral, and up to 35 percent. Um, there we go. Classified a lot due to the uh, to the level of the arterial wall. Uh, once again, medial fibrodysplasia, as you'll see, is the most common, and it occurs in adolescents and females, particularly in the 20 to 50 year range. Uh, it's uh, thinning of the media, and uh, angiographically, you see string of beads in the distal second and third part of the renal artery. Uh, historically, you see uh, acute onset of arterial hypertension. Uh, young people, uh, elevated creatinine, and oftentimes around three or more antihypertensive drugs. Physical exam, classically, you may be, uh, run across an abdominal brewery. Uh, also, people have flash pulmonary edema. Uh, renal ultrasound is a good screening uh, in regards to looking for renal stenosis. Um, a little bit about resistive index. It gives you a sense of parenchymal disease and whatnot, and typically, uh, if it's below 80, um, it would imply that there's not treatment of the renal arteries in, in renal and atherosclerotic disease uh, may be beneficial. There's not a whole lot of data in regards to FMD treatments and the resistive index, but it's a good thing to know about. Resistive index gives you a sense of what's happening in the kidney and as far as medical disease of the kidney. A diagnostic, uh, sort of the, still the gold standard, is renal angiography. And you can see here, looking at uh, a selective uh, catheterization of the renal artery, you see that sort of that string of bead appearance, typically a, a, a 10 millimeter or greater uh, um, uh, gradient across the uh, stenoses would imply uh, some improvement with uh, treatment. Uh, medical treatment is uh, you know, with a whole gamut of antihypertensives. Also, in st statin agents in these patients who may have early atherosclerosis, uh, and uh, we'll talk about interventional therapy. Uh, in regards with the angiography, it's primarily angioplasty, and this is, gives an example of a before and after angioplasty. And you're essentially breaking and popping the little uh, fibrotic bands that are, are present throughout the renal artery. Uh, and again, this is another one. This is perimedial dysplasia and given a before and the after with the angioplasty. Um, so on the s surgical type therapy, that was the endovascular open. Open is primarily reserved for uh, failures of, uh, of endovascular therapy, whether it be thrombosis, dissection, perforation, uh, angioplasty complications. Rarely would you ever put a stent in in regards to FMD. Uh, and you'd consider open surgical therapy maybe on someone who's had multiple angioplasty attempts. Uh, many different ways to skin a cat, many different ways to get to the renal arteries, transverse, subcostal skin incisions, retroperitoneal, transperitoneal, um, and also the reconstructions also can vary a bit in regards to what you use for your conduit, how you do it, you do you it. Uh, you know, whether you explant the kidney, put it back. Uh, there's uh, a lot of different ways of doing it. The main take home message is the uh, operative th things are, are reserved now, mainly for endovascular failures. Uh, just an example uh, the lo long term outcomes, uh, there, there's in regards to angioplasty and intervention of, of uh, FMD, and this series looked at. Uh, uh, looked at uh, 
uh, 29 women, they were average age of 45, uh, that, that had a pretty reasonable primary and assisted patency rate at five years and uh, a restenosis rate of 28, which is pretty uh, uh, right on par with the uh, literature out there. So keep in mind, uh, FMD is something that you won't see very often, but you need to know about. Uh, endovascular therapy is the mainstay and is effective and durable, and surgery would be for recalcitrant lesions. How'd I do? Good job. All right. Thank you.